Hey, I'm Patty from AldermanFarms.net and Alderman Farms on YouTube. I'm excited to announce that we have our revised and expanded Easy Sourdough Start to Finish eBook uh, ready for sale. It's, it, we have added a lot of new recipes to it and some tips and some pointers. And you don't have to be intimidated by making sourdough bread with this book. It tells you from start to finish how to make sourdough bread. If you're interested in it, you can find it in the link below. Today, I'm going to be making uh, pita bread. It is one of the, our family favorites. It's an easy go-to bread. Um, it's very quick, and I'm gonna show you how you can have bread for your lunch uh, just as quick as opening your refrigerator, just about. Anyway, so the first thing you're gonna need is one and a fourth cup of warm water. half a cup of starter, one and a half teaspoons of salt, and I am going to use some yeast today because of filming, it will make the, make the process go a lot faster. So I'm gonna put in a little yeast, and I actually have a little yeast written down in the book that is totally optional. Uh, this is a one rise sourdough, so um, it would be really simple uh, to do. And yes, uh, I looked for a prettier bucket to use, but honestly, this is what I use when I make it for us. So this is an old ice cream. Uh, I'm reusing an ice cream bucket that we have ice cream in. So anyway, that's what I like to use because it's it, it, you pop the lid on and you're done. You can put it in the fridge. So anyway, I'll tell you about the refrigerator in a little bit. But um, so this is going to be a fairly uh, sticky dough. Um, and it takes, that's all the ingredients except for the flour. And I'm using an all-purpose flour. You can use bread flour or all-purpose flour. And it takes a total of three cups. And I'm gonna go ahead and put in two right now. And I'll get my other one ready. And I will stir this up. And you see it's still very, very wet. And I'm gonna add in a little bit at a time for my last cup of flour because you wanna keep this a wet dough. I've actually made this in uh, Missouri one time and it actually did not stay as wet as it does here. So you're gonna to need to uh, look at your environment and you're gonna just want this to be a more of a moist dough, not a dry dough. It's not a dough that you would, you would be able to pick up and knead. You don't have to knead this pita bread. Um, or anything. So now I'm going to show you. It's it's very very still very sticky. I don't want it that sticky. I'm going to add a little more flour, and I'm just going to keep adding flour as I go, and um, till I get the right consistency. But like I said, this is not a dough that you're going to be able to just pick up. Like if you were going to knead your dough, you wouldn't be able to knead this dough once you get all the flour in. It's going to be too too moist. What's so nice about this pita dough, once you let it have the first rise, you can make pita bread with it right away, or you can put, put a lid on it. That's why I like doing it in this container because I never make all of this at one time. You put your lid on your container and put it in the refrigerator. And whenever you're ready to make pita, you have your dough ready for you. It literally takes, I don't even know if it takes five minutes to make one pita. And so we have, I keep this in the refrigerator. So if I don't have bread made, we just have a wrap for lunch and we use our pita bread with it. I do have to watch with using this square container. My flour does get stuck over in the corners and everything. All right, I wanna show you the dough again. It's still, it's still a little too wet. So I'm gonna use my last fourth a cup of flour and just stir it in. Like I said, there's no kneading of this. It's just stirring the flour in. And I do let this rise one time. 
and then it, like I said, it's ready for the refrigerator, or it's ready to make your pita bread, whichever you wanna do. And this will make a lot of pita bread, and this will stay good in the refrigerator for about a week. And I may have, I may have went over on that a little bit, but you can tell uh, if it's still good or not. Okay, now my dough is ready. And I'm gonna tell you this too, as it's in the refrigerator, uh, when I make it today, I will have to use quite a bit of flour as I'm rolling it out. I find that the longer it's in the refrigerator, it may dry out a little bit, so you don't have to use maybe quite as much flour. But anyway, I want you to see how it looks if you can. It's still, it's very, it's a very, very, very sticky dough. So that's the consistency we want. And now I'm gonna let this rise. It's gonna take this dough about an hour to rise till it's doubled. Uh, if you're not using yeast, it could take, you know, three, four, five hours, depending on how active your uh, starter is. Now I'm gonna put my lid on it and I'm not going to seal it. I'm just gonna place it on the top where it can still get some air and let it rise till it's doubled. All right, I have my pita dough risen. It rose up very good. See that in there? So this is the hardest part about this dough. It's still rather sticky. You see it's on my fingers here. Um, and like I said, after it's been in the refrigerator, it's not near as sticky as it is now. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna pinch up a little flour and sprinkle it on the dough. I guess I'll do it on this side, maybe you can see, where you wanna pick it up. You don't have to deflate this dough. In fact, if you were gonna refrigerate it, just put it straight in the refrigerator. All right. I'll dip it in a little bit of flour, and I'm gonna flour my board. Of course, you can't see that because my board is white. And y'all, I'm gonna tell y'all, I have tried and tried to make pita bread through the years because we like pita bread, but I've just not found a recipe where the dough is nice and pliable and that, that, that you can do it. All right, now I'm using a lot of flour and I'm sorry that this is really dying on here. Let me see. I've got another cutting board. Let me switch cutting boards and that will work a lot better. Sorry, I didn't think about that. All right, now, now you can see my flour and everything. All right, now I'm gonna put my dough on here and like I said, I use more dough when it's, a, when it's fresh than when it's older. And you're gonna have to put flour on your rolling pin too. And I, I have not mastered having pretty pitas every time. Sometimes they turn out nice and pretty and round and sometimes they're kind of funny looking, but you know what? They taste wonderful. All right, now, got that, and they're gonna be floury, that's okay. All right, I'm gonna show you the pan that I use. If you don't have a pan like that, like this, it's okay. You can just use any heavy pan, even just a regular cast iron pan will be fine. I'm actually, I picked this up at the store, I got it for 10 bucks, and so it's not any fancy, name cast iron, but it's cast iron and it works great. All right, so I have my pita ready. And the thing is, you don't wanna get this too thin and I've used plenty of flour on here. That way it, I was able to pick it up. So I'm gonna set it back here to be cooking and we'll roll out a few more. I sprinkle my flour, like I said, on my dough, and I stick my fingers in to kind of cut the dough, and I just pick me out a dough ball. That one was a little small, and I'm just gonna dip it in my flour to get plenty of flour on it. Make sure my board has plenty of flour. And I start out with my hands, just smushing it out, flattening it out. Stay using plenty of flour. 
And you can tell when you need to add more flour because your rolling pin will start sticking and also it will stick to whatever surface you're working on. See, it's sticking a little bit right there. Also, for a quick pizza, I do these. I'll roll these out and cook them, not quite all the way. And then I use some pizza sauce and cheese and put them in the toaster oven. And they make wonderful little pizzas, too. All right, let's see. I'm going to bring this over there and show you. It's kind of starting to bubble on top. Sometimes I just take it with my fingers and just flip it over. And I do have a spatula here. If you see this one, it's really, I don't know if you can tell on the camera or not, but it's not near browned enough. So I'm going to cook it on that side again. And you know, this is just trial and error. Um, you may see that they're a little thick and you want them a little thinner. I think that one's a little thick. And so you can roll them just a little bit thinner. But I find that I'm kind of taking my time right now and so I'm not having as hard of a time making it more in a round shape. Usually mine do turn out oblong, but you know, it's still good. We also love hummus, and so I make these homemade to eat with our hummus also. I'm gonna go ahead and roll out another one. See how sticky? It's just very, very sticky. And you know, as you're making this, if you find that you accidentally get too much flour, what you can do is shape this into a loaf and just make a loaf of bread with it. That would be perfectly fine. It's, it, it makes good bread too, so. I need a little more flour on my rolling pin. Now this is, this is kind of messy, but it is just flour, so it's an easy cleanup, so. We got an old dog that coughs, so sorry about his coughing. <laughs> and see, it's stuck right there, but I just take my fingers and kind of scoot it like that to get it unstuck. Put me a little more flour. All right, let me check this one. Go ahead and put this one on. And see, that turned out really nice. them on a pretty uh, medium, maybe a little past medium towards low, but I cook them pretty, pretty hot. My goal is always to be to have a next one rolled out by the time it's time to put it on there. So it works out pretty good. Here's a tip I'd like to share with you that as I'm making my pitas, I place them on a plate and I also put a lid for my pot over them. It keeps them warm and pliable for whenever you're done. I hope you've seen by today's video that sourdough isn't hard and sourdough is very versatile. You don't just have to make loaves of bread with sourdough. You can make biscuits, you can make pita bread, you can make waffles, pretzels, sweetbreads. There's all kind of things you could make with sourdough. If you'd like a copy of Easy Sourdough Start to Finish, click in the link below.